Hello, magical people of the internet. I am Jen and welcome to I Never Thought I Would, where we discuss doing things we never thought we would do and the fantastic places they can lead us. I am super excited about my guest today. He is one of my long lost friends that I haven't seen or spoken to in many, many moons. He is an entrepreneur, <laughs> he is an entrepreneur, <laughs> an artist, and a musician. Paul Bahu. Hi, Paul. Hey, Internet. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Hi, Jen. <laughs> Hi. It is so nice to see your face. It's been so long, aside from social well, media. Well, hiding behind this beard. Yeah, yeah, totally. You still see the feed. You get the baby <laughs> photos. Yes, I do. I know. It's so crazy. It's like a, another lifetime ago that I knew you. Um, it really was. Yeah, I know. For both of us, it's like, it's craziness how time flies when we're having fun. Um, <laughs> or avoiding a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another, that's another situation. <laughs> so this is so cool. And so I knew you back in the day when you were in a band called Inverse and you guys played the Sunset Strip all the time. I, I met you guys at a DVD release party for one of my friend's films. At, that's right. Uh, yes, that's how I met you guys. With like werewolf and, and all, the, all the monsters and everything. Yes, exactly. But you're an amazing artist. You're a musician. You've painted all the paintings behind you. And you have a book out, your debut novel. You are very imaginative, very creative. And I'm sure you've done, you know, maybe one or two things in your life that you never thought you would or something like that. So why don't you share mm -hmm. one of those stories with us? So mine is going to be an inverse, if you will. <laughs> uh, it's I never thought I would not be in a band. Yeah. So, and knowing you from being in a band, I can't imagine you not being in a band either. So what happened? I look like I'm in a band. <laughs> I definitely, with uh, all these uh, residual neck pains from years of rocking out and my lack, lack of hearing, I definitely feel like I'm in a band, right? Um, but no, uh, just kind of transitioned into a new place in my life. You know what happens? You know, you, you have this idea of who you are and what you're here on this earth to do and what you're going to do. And life just kind of zigs you and it zags you. And sometimes you find that there's a new path for you. And, uh, you know, I've been playing in bands since I was a teenager. And then uh, one day, just my professional career, I work in sustainability and recycling. My brother and I own a business. And that really started soaking up more and more of my time. I became a parent. You know, I got married, had kids, and uh, suddenly roping in three, four other people into a practice room three nights a week, playing gigs, and it's just it's out of reach at the moment. Yeah. But that's I, okay. I wrote a book. <laughs> exactly. Well, you were able to put your creativity into another outlet, which is amazing, because as creatives, we need to be doing something. It might not be the, the one we thought it was going to be in terms of right. pouring our creativity into music, for, for example, for what you were doing. But you've been painting, you've been writing. Um, but you also, so I knew you when you were in the band Inverse. And then you actually started a band called The Infamous Day with your wife. That's right. So That's right. And my, so, and my brother was on the drums too. So it was a whole family, family band. That's right. So how come, what, you and your wife, you don't still like play and sing in the living room with the kids? So <laughs> every, we got married and everybody moved. It was like a six piece band. And one person went to like Wisconsin. Another person moved to Portland. A uh, keyboarder got into like grad school. And my wife and I wrote a follow-up album, actually, and it's still sitting on my computer. We never released it. We're like, well, let's put a new band together. And we were trying people out, and it just never really came together. And then that's when I said, this is exhausting between work and everything else. Uh, I'm going to do something creative that doesn't involve other people's time. And so I started writing my book. It was actually a, a short story that I wrote in college. And I just kind of took it. My friend and I wanted to make it a comic and that didn't kind of pan out. And so I said, you know what, I'm going to revive it. It needs to exist in the world. And so I started novelizing it. And after about five years, 
boom, it exists. Congratulations. And it's called Sunset Distortion, the pyramid at the end of the world. And that's we're right. Get into what it's about in a minute. But I also love that you mentioned that it started as a short story and then you wanted it to be a comic and those, you know, the comic didn't really take off. And then you just decided like, okay, it, 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 ha it has to have a place in the world in some form or another. And you turned it into a novel, which is so incredible because a lot of times we give up on our ideas when absolutely you know when really we just needed to kind of reframe how we were gonna get it into the world so um how did that how did that evolution kind of go for you like how did you decide like the comic book wasn't really gonna gonna fly and then how long between deciding that and writing the novel you know what was the timeline like right so yeah, it was a short story I wrote my senior year of college, and uh, and then it and then for a couple of years it just kind of sat on my computer. And then uh, I, my fr a friend of mine and I were like, "Hey, we can turn this to a comic. This could be really cool." And so we made like a most of the first issue. And his, my artist, a guy named uh, Wesley Strother, he's actually the one that did the cover. Mm -hmm. But it's obviously very time consuming to draw and color a comic by yourself. Uh, yes. He just couldn't, he, could, he couldn't do it. And I, and, I, and I don't blame the guy. I love him dearly. And, and I was like, okay, no problem. And just kind of put in the back burner, you know, still doing inverse, still working, do, you know, living my life. And then it wasn't until after the infamous they broke up. Mm -hmm. And like you said, if you're a creative person, there's kind of something inside you and it has to get out. And it, it can come out in myriad of forms, you know, painting or acting, producing something, drawing, uh, uh, you know, writing music. There's so many avenues. Freaking making wicker baskets. I don't know. There's <laughs> there's no wrong way to do it. Uh, but you have to do something. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to turn this into a novel. And so for five years, I just wrote on it about an hour a day. Mm -hmm. And some days I... I, I get a page in other days staring at a screen nothing's coming but I, I, I you know I, I liken it to uh to going surfing right mm -hmm. some days you'll catch a wave some days you won't but you'll never know if you're going to catch a wave if you don't go to the beach exactly so, I've learned so many life lessons from surfing as well and it exactly <laughs> and it all has to do with the wave you have no control over what the water is going to be like that day I learned one lesson from surfing. I went one time in community college with my friend. My lesson I learned was that I'm very bad at surfing. <laughs> well, it's not for me. You haven't practiced. Fall right off. It takes practice. Yeah, that's true. Like anything true. in life, um, we're not going to be proficient at it our first time out. Um, so, but I love this. I love this story, and I also love how you mentioned it was exhausting trying to create something where you were dependent on so many other people, you know, right. um, whether it was a band, a six piece band, you have to get all of these people together. All of your schedules have to align. You need to find people proficient enough to play at your level because you freaking you're amazing. You freaking rock. Okay. And Melissa's amazing also. So to uh, find people. She blows my mind. I know. Hey, if you're out there in the internet world, you can just Spotify it, the infamous they. It was a brief flash in time, one album, two years, but listen to my wife sing, she'll blow your mind. Yeah, she's amazing. Like the two of you are so talented. So part of it is finding that caliber of talent of people who are willing to collaborate. You know, it's not like you right. know, you're paying for them to come in for the session. If you're looking for session musicians that you're paying, you know, a normal salary to, well, if you have money to solve your problem, you can solve most problems that way. Um, same with yeah. the comic book, I'm assuming, you know, this was a collaborative effort where you guys were hoping to create something and then share profits as opposed to you, the creator being like, okay, I'm going to hire somebody to do all these yeah. things for me. And that's so, what I do with this. I'm just like, I'm just, if you're, if you're, if, if you're not me, I'm paying you just, I'll, I'll, I'll you know, everyone that everyone got paid, you know, it's just, I know I'm not, I'm not going to wait for goodwill. Just. Here's your, here's, here's your cash. Please deliver. Yeah. Much and also better. you want to work with professionals. You have to pay professionals. Mm -hmm. I love 
you know, that you kind of resorted to the book because it was something that you could do solo. And it's, it's interesting for me, my book started off as a one person show because a one person show was more contained to a 10 person play. And I, by playing all the characters, I saved right. myself paying 10 people's salaries <laughs> and I worked for free. <laughs> DIY. You know? I never thought I would write a book and I had written several screenplays and it was so liberating writing the book because writing a screenplay is like a huge undertaking in itself, but it's only mm-hmm. step one of a 30 step process, you know, That's right. like, like writing a song, for example, writing a song is only step one, <laughs> you know, Oh yeah. There, you have multiple other steps and a team of people that you need in order to execute it properly and get it out into the ether. So there was something right. really liberating about writing the book that it's like, oh, wow, like I could do this on my own. No excuses at that point. It's, <laughs> it's on you. You have to be disciplined. No one's going to make, no one's going to push you into it. it it's, you, you got to propel yourself to get across the finish line. So um, did you enjoy the process of writing your book? I love the creative process. I, f- I feel like it's, it, it, the process itself is something that people don't really talk about enough. Everyone always wants to talk about the finished good, but I feel like getting there, churning those ideas, connecting those dots, finding the way to say it shorter and with, with more emphasis and, and, you know, how can I turn this paragraph into two sentences? How can I, how can I, you know, what is the least amount of words I can use to get this point across effectively and just challenging yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's like the world's biggest Rubik's cube, you know, really trying to get it in place and figure it out. I really, I I enjoy it. There's something very cathartic about the creative process, even if nothing ever is produced, you know, people ask me like, Oh, do you hope you sell a bunch of copies or it makes a movie? I'm like, honestly, I just want it to exist. And even if just the only people that read it are my friends and family, that's enough for me. Uh, I, I, I do the work for the sake of the work. That's There's why definitely I do it. like a self-satisfaction of setting a goal and accomplishing it. And then everything yeah, else is just icing on the cake. What, whatever happens, happens at that point. Okay. Put it out in the world. So this, this concept, this book is really out there. So can you tell everybody in the interweb about the book and how you got the idea? All right. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Feeling good? <laughs> Comfortable? Nice. <laughs> So uh, this is a story about a man named Laser. Uh, Laser is a man in his mid forties who has spent his life playing in a in heavy metal and heavy metal band, and playing the Sunset Strip scene. Obviously, uh, you, you and I, Jen, have met plenty of people who are like this, where they 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 hit a point in their life where they're at their peak, and even if they went past it, they never left that that phase of their life. Mm-hmm. And so Laser, he's now he's middle aged. He's playing in a cover band. But he still lives his dream, even if it's plateaued and he's kind of stagnated as an individual. This is this is who he is and this is the life he lives. And all of that is disrupted one day when he gets abducted by aliens. And yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, very much fish out of water. And so he gets abducted by aliens and he's kind of a laid back kind of guy. Hard to rock his boat, takes things in stride and gets put into the middle of a, a, a wider story involving space aliens, robots, interdimensional brain leeches, um, the Mormon church, it's got everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. And what is this pyramid at the end of the world? Does he ever make it there? Or do we have to read it? It could, be, it could be literal, it could be figurative, it could be both. But to, to really understand it, yeah, you got to read the book. You have to follow Laser on his journey. So Let's I'm see. so intrigued by this. And it, it sounds like it's a cross-genre novel. But what genre would you put it in if, if somebody forced you? It's science fiction, but it's lighthearted. Lots of jokes. You like I jokes? I was going to say, it sounds got comedic. Jokes. There's got to be a little yeah, bit of comedy in there. It's, it's comedic, it's weird, you know, it's 
got a bit of string theory in there. It's fun. You'll love it. Oh, it sounds <laughs> fascinating. And so you wrote this as a short story initially when you were in college. How did you come up with this? <laughs> um, well, Laser, the main character, is kind of an amalgamation of several people I know and knew. And, and just like the concept of this character and just s someone who is true to themselves, I won't say to a fault, but to a point where it inhibits their ability to move on as a person mm -hmm. and kind of putting someone in it, someone like that who is just so incredibly comfortable to the point where it's a rut to anyone else who sees it, except for mm -hmm. themselves. Um, forcing them into personal growth, forcing them into some place that's uncomfortable, forcing them to um, move on to maybe the next version of who they're supposed to be. Uh, but you know, with jokes. You know, and it's so interesting because you had that premise when you were young and in college and you were in bands for most of your life at this point. It's only been right. a very short trajectory of your life that you haven't been in a band. And the fact that you decided to write this book at a time in your life where you were kind of at this crossroads of identity because you identified with being a musician. That's completely like through and through who you thought you were and who you thought you were going to be the rest of your life and I'm not saying that you're done being a musician because you and I both know that you're not <laughs> just for now oh. you're putting a pin in it <laughs> I, I I told my wife Melissa I said once the kids are old enough to go to grandma's house and we don't have to worry about them for a night I'm forcing you to be in another band with me that's it you don't have a choice in the matter you sign the contract, we're married, you have to love you forever, we're starting a band. You can pick the yes. name, you can name the band. Now yeah. you can pick the genre, I don't care. We'll play whatever you want, but we're yeah. doing a band. I, I find it so fascinating that you're, you know, kind of writing this fish out of water story that was inspired, you know, at least a decade before you actually sat down to write the novel. While you were going through that crossroads in your life where you were kind of taking on this new identity of husband, dad, Maybe you didn't always know that you were going to get married and be a dad, but you didn't know that you'd have to give up the band <laughs> in order to and do that's, it. it. Absolutely. It, it, in some ways, I did kind of catch up to my protagonist, you know, because he's aging, you know, his back hurts, his knee hurts, stands up, he groans. It's <laughs> the, pain, the pain's getting older. And, you know, I kind of wrote it as ha 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 when, you know, when you're 20 and everything works, right? And then yeah. uh, now, now, uh, you know. 20 years later, here I am like, okay, yeah, I definitely feel it. But then I was also able to take that and, you know, novelizing it, really speak from experience about, you know, the aches and pains of middle age. So um, yeah, but yeah, I, I did not think I would not be in a band, but here we are. A lot of people don't realize, like you might get the seed or the spark of that idea, but maybe you're not mature enough or you haven't had enough life experience to flesh out the story until a decade later, two decades later, you don't have the perspective or experience. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you, you're, you're, create, you're creative, you know, you've done a lot of different things. You're an author. And I mean, you know, sometimes, yeah, things have to marinate or you do need to have some experiences so that you can really make something stick mm -hmm. and you can, you can make it maybe resonate to other people, because now that you're speaking from experience as, as opposed to just, you know, conjecture, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's something that might hit other people more. And I mean, I've got six partially finished novels that are anywhere from, you know, 10 pages to a hundred pages that aren't ready to be done yet. Mm -hmm. They're, they're waiting for that next wave Yeah. to get me there. You know, I've always known I wanted to, to write a story about my grandparents and, um, you know, kind of the course of their life. And I knew that I, I had the idea. I interviewed my grandma when I was 18, knowing that one day I would tell her story and, you know, I'm still not ready. And I know I'm not going to be ready for at least another 10 years to write that story. But I knew at the time that my grandma might not be around when I'm ready to tell the story. So I had to start collecting and mining the information early on to yeah. save it for when I would be ready. Mm -hmm. That's one of, one of my big regrets is my, 
my grandmother, she, uh, I, I really wanted to do that. She's, uh, she, she's since passed on, I'm but uh, fascinating woman. I mean, she was a Palestinian refugee. She was, she was, she had lived in multiple different countries and seen lots of conflict and just had stories to tell. And I was always like, I really need to just write this down one day. And, and then I was starting to kind of come into my own to like really as a writer to be like, yeah, I want to do this. And unfortunately she, she had dementia and she couldn't tell those stories. Yeah. And, and so I'm saying, do it, just, just don't wait, just do it, get it down. And then you can always kind of clear the junk later. I remember you telling me about your grandma. Remember Wild lady, just, yeah. just, she's experienced things that just blows my mind. Just like I escaped on this boat and we got out and I had to like negotiate to get my, my brothers and sisters safe. And they were like babies. We had to bring them on. And, and then, you know, then we were in Lebanon and then there was civil war and then we went here and it's just, yeah, it was, like, yeah, wow. it's crazy. Your grandma lived through so much. It's amazing now what's going on in the United States. And of course the, our world isn't perfect yet, but we've really lost perspective of Absolutely. how easy and amazing our lives are compared to where our grandparents came from. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and like you said, like anybody out there, if you have a loved one whose story you want to get, just get it now. Don't wait. Don't uh, wait. There's never going to be a perfect time for anything. So now is the perfect time. Yes. Now is the perfect time. Yes. You never know exactly. what happens tomorrow. Exactly. You could have yeah, you have COVID Z a strain. Everyone turns into zombies now. Run I know. for your lives, right? Just do it. Do it before the zombies come. Exactly. Whether it's, you know, <laughs> writing a book or writing a song or, you know, getting a loved one's story down or doing something you never thought you would. Just do it today. Do it, do it now. Do it. do it now. Don't like it. Don't do it later. Get to the chopper of your soul. Get there. <laughs> been so much fun Paul I am so grateful that you took the time to chat today and please tell everyone where can they find you where they where can they find your book where can they find your music because you all have to check out his music uh, his book is fabulous and creative and inventive but this guy is a freaking rock star you have to check out the music thank you thank you very much uh yeah the internet go on the internet type in inverse <laughs> type in the infamous day, you'll find it. <laughs> and your book's available on Amazon. One last time, ooh, here we go. See, there's lasers getting sucked up. Oh no, <laughs> oh, where am I going? I'm going up into the, into the book title. Amazing, <laughs> Sunset Distortion. And we'll I'll have all the links below so people can easily find you. And Thanks. Uh, this has it's been on Amazon. Great. It's on Amazon, I did the, the easy way, right? And it's like, yeah, nah, just Amazon, go. Go buy it. Everyone can get to Amazon. <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you for having me, Jen. It is it has been wonderful. I appreciate your time. And uh, uh, I hope to see you again soon. Yes. And just, I, you know, I know you put a pin in it, but I know you're going to keep rocking because that's what you were born to do. With this hair, how could I not? Exactly. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you all out there in the interweb for tuning in. And like we said, do it now, do something you never thought you would do. Let us know what it is in the comments and where it leads you. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content and have a beautiful day.